Hey guys, in observance of the band Oppressor reuniting for the first time since the turn of the century and playing a set at the Maryland Death Fest, which I will be attending for the first time in about 10 years, uh, I wanted to have a look at the career of the band. Um, they're kind of an unsung band in the, the death metal scene, and maybe deservingly so, because they, uh, the, the amount of good material to not so good material, uh, the, it doesn't skew in their favor. Uh, but I wanted to have a look at the band and see what went right, what went wrong, uh, because if they had played their cards right, they could have been an important missing link between uh, the brutal death metal genres that were kind of borrowing from suffocation, that percussive style, and um, probably a less refined take on, say, like the progressive, thrashy death metal of Atheist and Cynic, uh, they do have that sense of tonality in them uh, as the band evolves, uh, but they also had uh, that that uh, caveman death metal quality to them that th there was a nice duality to the band uh, in the midpoint of their career. Uh, but I want to look at where it all started. Uh, if you were only familiar with the full lengths of the band, you would probably be pretty uh, surprised to hear what is on the first demo, World Abomination. Um, this is pretty much just straight up knuckle dragging death metal, uh, would sit comfortably alongside a band like, say, Obituary. Um, the one thing to note is, even at this stage of the game, they were reliant on the big chorus to make the songs memorable, uh, which kind of betrays the death metal ideals in, in a way. Um, but immediately, you could see from the first song, there's only a couple of themes that repeat, uh, and the, it really tries to make sure that that chorus stays in your head. Uh, and that's going to be something that we're going to see even as the band evolves. Uh, they're going to take on a more progressive tonality, but still rely on a bit of that pop song structure to give the song's identity uh, a bit to the band's detriment. So um, this isn't a great release. I do like the rawness of the recording, as do most old school metal fans. Uh, but you can get that in a number of better releases. But it is important to see, uh, because as far as I understand, the band didn't have any lineup shifts. Yeah, it looks like the same same band, um, which is pretty alarming, because the, the style change is, is uh, pretty in, incredible to behold. Uh, so to all be on the same page, to have all four band members want to evolve in the way that they did, uh, it, it, is, it is a bit surprising. So... Uh, the, the, the real growth you're going to see is in their second demo, As Blood, as Blood Flows. Um, this is essentially all of the songs that you're going to see on their first, the first full-length record uh, uh, without two tracks, I believe. Uh, and the, 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 uh, the change in the style is very much apparent. There's a lot more dexterity in the musicianship. Um, they did try to have less of that, um, you know, four fret caveman death metal aesthetic and use a lot more of the tonal palette of the guitar to give the songs identity. Uh, and it is a very, it's a solid demo. Um, the best material that you're going to hear on the full length is not present, but um, the, the, this did manage to get them signed and get the, uh, the full length out. So it's cool to observe if you want to hear this com in comparison to the full length that's about to be that I'm about to discuss. Uh, the songs are pretty much the same, aside from some uh, uh, recording differences. Of course, there wasn't money that was backing this demo, uh, but uh, the it's mainly important to see the difference between the first demo and and this because I think it had been maybe under three years, uh, and it's quite a, a crazy style change. Uh, a lot more of a technical leaning to the band. Uh, and that brings us to uh, what most people agree to be their best release, uh, The Solstice of Oppression, full length. And uh, if you are familiar with the last demo that I talked about, it's all, almost all of that material is here with the addition of, I believe, two tracks, one of them being their best song by far. Uh, the first song of the album, Seasons, and that's a real uh, unfortunate thing. It shoots the band in the foot quite a bit because uh, if th this being the most readily available record of theirs at the time uh, and then coming out of the gate with that song, which had to have been written after the last demo, uh, given that it wasn't present on it, uh, it really just does so many things right. And so it has such a, 
uh, a stronger sense of adventure and more of a declarative statement as to what the band is trying to become uh, than anything that follows after it. Uh, the band, it, the song does have a pretty strong chorus, I would say, but the arrangement plays with how to get there, and it's not so obviously set up. Um, there's a the, there's a segment where there's a guitar solo, and I've talked to you guys about what happens when most bands want to have a guitar solo. The rhythm guitar track uh, in the background just becomes uh, a billion IQ points lower, and that doesn't have to happen. Obviously, you want the lead guitar to take center stage, but you can do that without making the rest of your music just like kind of take a nosedive, and this is an example of that, uh, something that you might see also on like the Cynic Focus record where they don't allow the rhythm guitar to get in incredibly stupid when just because there needs to be a guitar solo um the the that, but back to that song seasons it's far and away the it's it's the most progressive song they have most adventurous um most declarative as like this is the statement of what the band wants to be uh and then you have the rest of the material that is on the previous demo but with better production it's still a very raw sounding record and i do enjoy that about it um and there's a few interludes that are also uh, utilized on the record to break up the flow. Uh, one thing you're going to see is uh, the band showed a lot of advancement in that first song, but some of the songs that are on the demo, uh, you could tell that they do not know how to develop their musical vocabulary to the point where they can get out of some holes that they create in the song structures. They find themselves getting stuck in like a 6-8 rhythm and... Uh, Every kind of rhythm and tempo does have uh, its own utility in a song, but you can really feel the fatigue that that will present if you can't break out of it and the song just stays like that. And the, the second half of the record is pretty much firmly rooted in that 6-8, uh, that quicker waltz rhythm. It's not it's not a bad thing. It's just something that they, they showed in the first song of the record, that season song, that they understood how to get out of that rut and to use more tools at your disposal to have a uh, uh, a song that expresses a lot of things as opposed to the single dimensions that you're going to hear as the album plays out. Uh, still a lot of focus on having a big chorus. It doesn't go away, it's still there. Uh, and that brings us to this record, Agony. This is actually my first exposure to the band. Um, I grew up near Chicago, and I remember when I purchased this, this is when I... I had to have been, I believe it was early 1997. I probably wasn't quite 16 yet. I bought this and uh, Internal Bleeding's Voracious Contempt and Broken Hope's Loathing just because I thought the covers looked cool at a Best Buy of all places. And I remember wanting to do music at the time. And I had uh, told myself, this is, this is my dream, just to be able to walk through a store like Best Buy and see my own record on the shelves. And... Uh, I still feel that way, so uh, Best Buy, I'm coming for you. I want my records on your shelves. Anyway, as for this record, um, they kept that tonality that you're hearing on the more progressive elements of uh, the previous record, Solstice of Oppression, uh, but they dumbed down the song arrangements to make it essentially really busy pop song arrangements with... Uh, uh, the arrangement's not busy, but really busy riffs to create uh, to like uh, around a kernel of a pop song arrangement. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm really bad at explaining this right now, but the the riffs are very ornate. The song structures are not, aside from maybe like a little bit towards the end of the record. Uh, it's essentially still built around that big chorus, uh, and but all the riffs are interesting, um, much more interesting than what they had. Uh, presented before, aside from the season song, of course. Um, and there's some goofy stuff on here. There's some stuff where the vocalist attempts a bit of a hardcore bark, doesn't work at all. Um, and it's, but it's a short record. It's a, it's a, it's a record that is uh, interesting enough that, and it doesn't outstay its welcome. It's about a half hour long, um, and it is one of those bands that like could have. Uh, sat comfortably alongside something like Cynic, uh, later Pestilence, uh, uh, before they broke up and reformed, of course. Uh, but it was still a little bit too far in the pop realm reliance of the chorus. The songs still weren't adventurous enough. It was just really dexterous riffs in kind of a, a, pop, uh, a pop song arrangement. Uh, which brings us to the last record. 
Uh, that's when things really kind of fell apart. Sorry, my light is looking pretty terrible. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, this is the Elements of Corrosion record. Um, and they decided to really just kind of uh, magnify their weaknesses on this one. Uh, they went ahead and made the riffs very, very busy, but their arrangements got way stupider. There's, there's some arrangements where there are no variations and it's just A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. And, uh, and you can get away with that if your material is compelling. Uh, despite the busyness of the songs, it doesn't get there. Uh, but uh, there's some cool riffs on it. One of the things that they did on the previous record, Agony, that they continue here, is they have a nice duality where there will be a riff that's very busy, not in like a not a time signature that you're going to immediately latch on to, but it has it's like kind of a staccato, a lot of stops and starts, but the drums will be a constant blast beat throughout it. So you have this kind of uh, momentum as if a train is carrying you through it, but the riffs have a stop and start nature, so you have... Uh, like a sophisticated melody and a caveman-like rhythm. So you get that nice nice duality and that they, they do that on this record too. But there's there's a lot of real embarrassing stuff on here as well. Uh, the record concludes in a very much whimper of a way uh, and the band shortly thereafter broke up and uh, some of the members formed Soil, which you guys may know as a kind of poppy new metal band, which is totally understandable given that the band had always wanted to have those those big chorus to, choruses to anchor the songs uh, and uh, the fact that they couldn't, uh, aside from that song Seasons from uh, Soul System of Oppression, they couldn't figure out how to make an actually progressive arrangement. So why not just strip everything away, go for a basic popular uh, metal type of sound, for, uh, like a, you know a, a popular mall core metal type of sound. It makes perfect sense. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, there's the, it, it, the opening of this record, it, it just, it's essentially, uh, an exercise. It's a guitar solo type, type of exercise. Uh, and it does not add to the song. It does, it, it is, it's just, it's, it's a real mess of a record and you could feel that they just kind of didn't want to be there when you're trying to listen to it actively and pay attention to the arrangements. It just feels it feels laborious and not in not in a, a way that like beckons you. It just feels like the band had checked out, even though the riffs are creative in a way. It feels like they just don't have a story to tell. Uh, and they are reuniting and they're going to play uh, Maryland Death Fest. And no doubt after knowing how the Metal Underground had been receptive to their efforts, they're probably going to focus mostly on the material before Agony. So I'm going to be excited to see that. Uh, this is one of the first bands I had probably seen at uh, the Jackhammer Club in Chicago, uh, which uh, kept its name but changed to a venue that is much more befitting of the name as opposed to a metal club. Uh, and... Uh, and yeah, it's uh, they're a band that when they had had played live, they they definitely were uh, playing beyond their means. The songs were essentially much faster. You could see that on on the live video that they put out. Uh, and they're struggling. They're struggling to to keep the material afloat. So that shows you that they really just kind of wanted to dazzle, and they were kind of doing whatever they could to get the audience to be receptive. If the technical guitar work didn't work. The, the catchy choruses might, whatever you can do to just make people like you. And that's that's kind of where the band fell flat in a lot of ways. But the stuff they did right, some of the riffs that do work and the songs that do work, um, were the, it showed that they had potential to be a, a band that could sit comfortably alongside your atheists and your cynics. Uh, and it would have been cool to see a band that kind of shedded the, uh, uh, the thrash layer and presented that link between brutal death metal and 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 prog metal it would have been cool to see that um but it didn't work out for them uh still gonna be excited to see them live um we'll see how it goes the band seems to be uh very much uh celebrating that they are doing this this stuff again which is cool to see uh i don't see it as much of a cash grab considering they probably made way more off of soil and other ventures uh but but yeah i'll let you guys know how it is when, when I make it to the fest this year, if you guys want to bro down with me, that's where you can find me. Uh, but yeah, band worth checking out. 
noteworthy band, almost there, not quite, showed potential, and didn't fully realize it. But, uh, but yeah, thanks for listening.